All right, welcome to today's episode. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Most of my videos have been about throwing tutorials and general skills on the field, but today's video came about because somebody in the comments of one of my videos asked, hey, how can I have great spirit? And initially I thought, hmm, you know, that's not typically the kind of video that I've had. And, uh, but then I thought about it and I said, you know, this is a really important topic. And I think especially as young players, even players that have started playing, perhaps have never had a discussion around, you know, what does that really mean? How can I have good spirit? Is it defined differently for, uh, for, for different teams, maybe countries or areas of a country? Um, but what, what, what's going to really be the foundation for somebody to have great spirit? Because I think at the end of the day, spirit of the game is special to ultimate Frisbee. It's unique. There are not many sports that uh, promote uh, a spirit or the game or a sportsmanship in the way that ultimate Frisbee does. You certainly see, uh, you know, great sportsmanship or spirit in other sports. Uh, you know, certainly seen in tennis sometimes, but there's just not many out there that have it at the level Ultimate Frisbee does. And it's certainly necessary because generally it's self-refereed. Now at the highest level, like the AUDL, the American Ultimate Disc League, there are referees, but um, even they have an integrity rule, which depending on where you are or fall in terms of what, what type of call it was, whether it's the receiving end um, or you were the one that, that committed the foul, uh, you could overturn the call if you feel differently of how the the play actually occurred. So it's unique. Certainly don't see that in basketball um, or really many of kind of the, the top pro sports out there. So it's a special thing. And so I think how to have great spirit is super important just because we want to be able to govern our sport, especially as self-refereed, and, and really have a, a place for fair play and and not not feel like hey this is this game or this uh, you know tournament or this moment even within a game was taken advantage of the spirit of the rules that have been set. So so we're going to go into how to have great spirit today. Um, but before we do that, let's let's just take a look at the definitions. So we're all on the same page. There are people that you know have different definitions or kind of try to stretch. Uh, the definition to their own advantage, but let's just take a look at, at the definition. So I'm right now I'm on the spirit of the game, uh, excuse me, the world flying disc Federation website, uh, and where they talk about spirit of the game. And so we're just going to read their definition, uh, go through it just so we're, we're on the same page and I'm going to read through it, uh, cause it's important. So it goes to say all players are responsible for administering and adhering to the rules. So I think this is actually really important. I think for most people it's like, yeah, huh, I know the rules. Of course I know the rules. Well, I think for a lot of new players, including myself, who, you know, you come from other sports and you're excited and, and you're wanting to play and you kind of just get it. Maybe you're a, a, an athlete and you kind of get kind of the dynamic of sports or, or contact or whatnot. But you know, not knowing the rules is 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 not good, right? Because as things go, especially in a self refereed sport, you can go and play basketball, and if you don't know the rules, the whistle is going to blow, right? But um, and there's going to be a turnover or something. And ultimate frisbee, uh, you're just going to have a lot of unhappy people around you, and you may be oblivious to it, right? They may try to address it, but it just could take a while, right? It just ruins the the you know the dynamic of the game. Um, so it goes on to say, ultimate relies upon a spirit of the game that places the responsibility for fair play on every player. It is trusted that no player will intentionally, keyword, intentionally break the rules. Thus, there are no harsh penalties for breaches, but rather a method for resuming play in a manner which simulates what would most likely have occurred had there been no breach. Highly competitive play is encouraged but should never sacrifice the mutual respect between players adherence to the agreed upon rules of the game or the basic joy of play. So I want to go back to the, there are no harsh penalties for breaches. So in basketball, in the NBA, if you get six, if you get six fouls, you're out of the game, right? You're going to sit on the bench in ultimate Frisbee. 
If you foul a hundred times, uh, you can still play, you can still foul, but nobody's going to like you, right? You, you are not fun to play with because you are uh, likely taking advantage of the rules. And it's, it's really taking away from the fair, uh, fair play and the spirit of which the game is supposed to be governed, right? And then it goes on to say actions such as intentional fouling, cheating, dangerous plays, disrespectful conversation, and other win-at-all-costs behavior are contrary to spirit of the game. So I think this is really important. Intentional fouling, cheating, like these kinds of things where you're intentionally, you know, in, in, in basketball, right, you look at the end of the game, you see intentional fouls all the time, right? There is a cap to it because if you can get, you know, eject, uh, uh, you can be removed from the game or rejected if it's a flagrant, of course. Uh, but if if you hit a certain amount of fouls, you, you're out, right? You're going to sit on the bench. And ultimately, there's not like that. So you're not supposed to have intent to conduct uh, intentional fouls, right? Um, and then, of course, the win at all costs behavior, right? So doing things that you shouldn't be doing to just win the game at the expense of other players, right? So you look at if your desire to win is so much so that you're intentionally just just fouling and grabbing shirts and 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 just causing the other team to just not be able to play the game like like it's supposed to be played within the rules then you are really breaking the spirit of which uh, ultimate frisbee is supposed to be played in that sport you know in this case ultimate is supposed to be played um, so it's really important to maintain integrity is a really important word respect for players um, because uh, uh, it's it's not having respect for players, not having integrity is an easy way to just get people to certainly not not like playing ultimate against you and really taking advantage, right? So it goes on to have some examples of good spirit, uh, informing a teammate if you think they have made a wrong or unnecessary call or caused a foul or violation. Obviously, that's great. Uh, it's certainly, you wouldn't, I, I don't know if I've seen that um, in professional sports, if there is, I'm sure there's something out there where, you know, I, well, in a ref refereed sport, you know, it's really important because, you know, you don't necessarily have an objective view. Uh, with the referee, they're the ones making the calls. They're supposed to be the objective party. So, uh, but in ultimate, especially without referees at the top club level, you're going to have to talk with the other opponents depending on what happens. So having other perspectives is important to show good spirit. Um, number two, retracting a call when you no longer believe the call was necessary. Uh, this is obviously a great example of spirit. You know, sometimes in the uh, excitement of play uh, in your desire to win, you make a call. And you're like, no, for sure, this, is, this, this was a, a foul when it really wasn't, right? Um, so being able to take that back is, is important. Um, and so some of these others, uh, certainly just good to show respect and good sportsmanship, um, good spirit to, towards others, but less, um, uh, you know, complimented opponent, good player spirit. Like those are great things. Um, and all, all really important to kind of the overall spirit of the game, but just to kind of get to the question of how do you have great spirit? And I think, this is a really important thing. It's easy to talk to, hey, have respect for your opponents, right? Have integrity, have honor, right? And those are great um, adjectives. Those are great, um, uh, really, virtues of how one should should operate. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today of really the how, and I'm not going to go into super, uh, super detail on it, but I want to at least highlight them because it's really important. But I want to talk about virtue. Um, virtue is really, uh, uh, the foundation of how we should operate as human beings. Um, and so there's a few things that, that I think are just important to mention because I think as you understand virtue, it can really help, it can really help understand the way in which we should operate both on and off the field. And if you saw in those examples on WIFDIF, there were some things that while you're actually playing the game, and then there's things that while you're just standing on the sidelines, you're certainly part of the game, but you're not actually part of the play, right? And so having good spirit, right, 
virtue helps virtue helps get us there puts us in the right mind in the right um uh, in the right disposition to be able to play with good spirit right and play with your best spirit um so uh, i'm going to look at uh, some definitions here from uh, around four cardinal virtues and I, I think it's super important just to do get some definitions and then i'm going to show some examples of actually great spirit because there's some really incredible examples of spirit um so so what is virtue um and and how do you acquire it so this comes from the catechism of the catholic church um talks about human virtue like this human virtues acquired by education by deliberate acts and by a perseverance ever renewed in repeated efforts are purified and elevated by divine grace they forge character and give facility in the practice of the good the virtuous man is happy to practice them Okay, they're acquired by education and by deliberate acts and by a perseverance, perseverance, ever renewed and repeated efforts. So again, you acquire virtue by doing it, right? You acquire discipline by being disciplined, by having disciplined actions, right? You become, uh, you can become respectful by practicing respect for other people, right? You can practice integrity by having integrity in situations where you have a choice whether or not to be that so again they're they're acquired so if you feel like hey i'm not really there well hey that's okay we we all have faults and we're all not perfect in this including myself and so i want to talk about four cardinal virtues and i'm going to just go through the definitions briefly but i think it's just important to highlight these four because from these four all fall the ones that you hear you know integrity rule right respect all these important things and so it's just important to know these virtues as you're kind of thinking about hey how can i be a, a better spirited player how can i have truly great spirit where somebody on the other team says wow they're not only a great player they're not only a great athlete they're not only a competitor but they treat us with respect they treat their teammates their opponents they treat the game, right? They treat everyone around them with respect and dignity. And I think a lot of times, especially in competitive environments, uh, it's it's easy to lose that. It's easy to let your cool kind of your temper, your temperament kind of take over in a in a negative way. So what are the four what are the four virtues? Um, and I want to just go to this site here from Edward Sree. Speaks some really great truths, but. The, the four virtues that every human person needs to live a happy and successful life, right? On and off the field. Prudence, temperance, courage, and justice. And so Dr. Sri, who's, who wrote this, explains how these cardinal virtues allow us to flourish in our careers, personal goals, relationships, and that applies to everything, even on the field, right? So these four virtues, these cardinal virtues, allow us to flourish. They will allow us to flourish as a player, as a complete player. Not as a player that's going to take advantage of the rules, but this is going to allow you to, to flourish if you exhibit these, right? These set us free to pursue, pursue the good, as you see here. Okay, so let's look at prudence first. So prudence is considered the foundation of all the virtues. Prudence helps us to make practical decisions in light of larger principles and goals. It entails making decisions with the end in mind. It helps us to do the right thing in the right way at the right time. This is huge. The right thing in the right way at the right time. So just think about putting yourself on ultimate field for a second. It, big moment, championship game, you know, double game point, universe point. You, you maybe catch a disc and nobody can see it, fumbles underneath you. You know that you lost control and hit the ground, but nobody saw it except you. What do you do? Do you, your team is counting on you. You're one of the best players. Do you just kind of, nobody would know if you, if you, if you just said, oh yeah, I caught it, right? Do you do the right thing in the right way at the right time? So this prudence, prudence is super crucial to having 
and especially will lead us to having success with these other virtues. So let's go to justice. And for justice, I'm actually going to move over here. So these definitions, as I mentioned, come from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Really great definitions that, you know, if you want to look back, I'll put the links in the description. But justice, this is a big one. Justice is the moral virtue that consists in the constant and firm will to give their due to God and neighbor, right? So think about on the field, that's your neighbor, right? You are living in society with these folks. They're within the ultimate community. And it goes on to say, the just man, often mentioned in the sacred scriptures, is distinguished by habitual right thinking and the uprightness of his conduct towards his neighbor. The uprightness of his conduct toward his neighbor. Okay, a lot of examples I could use here. Uh, I'm going to go through some here in a second. But this is giving your opponent, think about giving your opponent what they are due right? It consists in the constant and firm will to give their due to God and neighbor, right? So just think of your opponent as your neighbor. They are, right? There are fellow brothers and sisters. And are you going to give them their due? They put in a ton of work. They put in a ton of effort to be there. And if they make a play and, you know, you don't, you, you call foul when it really shouldn't have been, but you felt like, oh, you know, if I give this away, my team could lose, right? Th those thoughts can go through our head, especially in big moments, right? What do you do? And justice, so justice, understanding justice, did they earn that? They earn that. You, you give them their due by, you know, saying, oh, you know what? I dropped that pass or you didn't foul me when I dropped that, right? There's a lot of different scenarios. So next, let's go to fortitude. So fortitude is the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of the good. The virtue of fortitude enables one to conquer fear. This is a, this is a great one. Even fear of death and to face trials and persecutions, right? So th just right here, the virtue of fortitude enables one to conquer fear. Conquer fear. Just stop right there. We all have fears. It's... but. It takes fortitude. It takes courage to, it takes courage in a big moment to say, oh, you know what? I dropped that pass that nobody could see. Or you know what? I did actually foul you. You should get the disc back when nobody saw it. I did hit your hand, even though it was light or you didn't really think it was a foul, but according to the rules, hey, it actually was, right? It takes courage to do that because one could look the other way. One could just kind of fight just to fight, go to the observer and say, hey, what do you think, Mr. Observer, right? Or Mrs. Observer, w what do you think happened? And it's easy to just kind of push it and say, well, we'll give it to somebody else. But do you know, did you actually foul them? Did you drop it? Did you throw it away? What really happened? So courage is super, super important. We'll see that with some of these great examples. And then the last one is temperance. So I'm just going to go over here. Um, oops, I'm going to go here. So temperance is the moral virtue that moderates the attraction of pleasures and provides balance in the use of created goods. It ensures the will's mastery over instincts and keeps desires within the limits of what is honorable. So right there, the great, great line, the will's mastery over instincts and keeps desires within the limits of what is honorable. So uh, an easy way to kind of explain it here in Ultimate of what temperance is, is we need to temper our desire to win. So if I go back to the spirit of the game example, right? Um, talks about win at all costs behavior are contrary to the spirit of the game. We need to be temperate. We need to have temperance with our desire, our strong desires to win right? It's a good thing to want to win and have competition. That's a great thing, right? Those are all, that's a great thing. But winning at all costs and not having a temper to say, hey, I need to put myself in a place where my desire for something, and it doesn't have to be a championship, certainly could be anything, but in this case, an ultimate, winning a championship, getting MVP award, right? Getting some sort of accolade, right? Even taking goals from your teammates, right? Going in there and just grabbing goals ahead of them when they they, sh they were the closer one to get it, right? Those These things can happen. There's a lot of different examples if you think about it. Um, so temperance. So, so those are the four virtues, prudence, justice, 
fortitude, and temperance. So remember those. If you walk away from anything from this video, uh, obviously there's some great integrity examples, but look these up in studies and think about how they can apply to not only your life, but of course, you know, your game, the spirit of the game within this sport that we all love. Um, so now I'm just going to uh, show some examples of spirit. There's some really, really awesome examples. And here I'm going to start with, um, this is WCC 2022. It's the Women's Ultimate Club Championships. And it is a moment. It's, it's universe point. Okay, so there's already been two turnovers in the game. Uh, one, two, three. Actually, I think uh, one, two. Yeah, two. Two turnovers in the game. Fury is on defense. It's been a long game. And so this is truly incredible. So what you're about to see is Manuela Cardenas um, makes, a, makes a cut. And you're going to see what she does. And the defender here. So I'm going to just kind of play this here. It's a really, really close. You can see right there. I'm just going to let this play. And you're going to see Claire Desmond kind of ha she has good position. And you're going to see Manuela here. And it's playing rather quickly. So here, I'm just going to slow it down to normal speed. So right there, it doesn't look like there's a lot of contact. So you can see her arm look like just briefly earlier that her arm may have been in the way um but there's not a lot of contact right see right there I, I, that's a questionable questionable call i think if you're on that side but here's what happens claire desmond uh, this is unbelievable okay it's uh, this could have gone either way in my opinion as an observer if i was observing this game i would said oof that's a uh, first of all Yina, I thought, threw that too early. And well, it wasn't even really open because Claire was playing tough defense. Um, Claire did look like she was extending her arm, but Manuela also looked like she was kind of running into Claire. So it was really a tough one. And honestly, um, only Claire probably knows what really happened. And so after not too long of deliberations, Claire says, you know what? I got you. It's your disc. And this is, just to put it in perspective, this is the world championships. It's already been two turnovers. Uh, 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 a revolution is 15, 20 yards out of the end zone. And if they score, they lose. And this is a, every four years. And this is a, a huge, huge tournament and, of course, championship game. But Claire, I, I want sh it shows every virtue here so i just want to show she is prudent right she realizes okay she she stops right she doesn't kind of blow up or anything she said okay recognize the foul call what let me think about what just happened here right she has a desire to do good right of to say okay what is the truth what is the objective truth here let's get to the bottom of it right she doesn't have any ulterior motive she did you would have probably seen it by her saying, absolutely not, I completely disagree without a dialogue or discussion of the truth, okay? Number two, she has an idea of justice, right? What is the fair thing here? Did I actually foul Manuela, right? Is that the truth, right? Did Manuela deserve to get there if I wasn't impeding her in an obstructive or a, a, a way that was uh, that the rules didn't allow, right? And... As, as you're going to see, I'm, I gave it away, but she's going to give back the call, right? So she gives back the call to Manuela. She says, you know what? I did get you, right? So she was prudent to determine that. Justice, she said, you know what? Uh, it is your due, Manuela. It is the fair for the common good, for the game, for the out, the true outcome of what's supposed to happen here. She says, you know what? No, you earned that. I took that away from you. You would have gotten that. She exhibits courage. First of all, that is not an easy thing to do. Just to remind, this is the championship game. It is every four years. The, both these teams are clawing to go get this. You can tell, you know, every one of these women were working super, super hard to win this championship and get this. But she says, you know what? I, Claire says, I'm putting the truth. I'm putting the true good for the game, for Manuela, for both teams. I, I, I'm, I'm 
uh, and and that takes courage to do that right she could have eat nobody would have noticed she she could have contested that could have been sent back yes they would have still had the disc but nonetheless this was a, an act of courage absolutely 100 percent. and then lastly temperance right she is not taking her desire to win this game over anything and letting her emotions get to her right she's calm she's collected shows integrity just incredible display uh, of an example of of that and so we're going to look at another one here and this is a a men's game actually in the AUDL so this is actually in 2016 and I'm going to start playing this as I as I talk but a hook this is between the Madison Radicals and the Seattle Cascades so just to provide some background Seattle was down by seven goals. This is the semifinals of the 2016 AUDL Championship Weekend. Okay, so what just happened is uh, they, Seattle's making a huge comeback. It's the fourth quarter. There's six minutes and 36 seconds left, and Seattle's making a big comeback. They're still down. They're down by one, and if Madison puts puts them down by two, but they're making a huge comeback. But there is a call of a stall on the Madison player. They said that it's seven second stall count that there was a Seattle player within three yards of him. And so this would be a big turnover if Seattle were to get it so they could go tie the game. And so you're gonna see here in the replay here in a second, I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna let it play. So you're gonna see Colin Camp get it. So just watch, he's, uh, Hussein, Hussein is outside of three. Maybe he gets in there. Now he gets away from three yards. So there's nobody guarding him. And and they now they're about to give Seattle the disc. And so I'm just going to fast forward this because there's about two minutes or so until they get until they get to the right call. And what happens is, is Seattle, after deliberation, and honestly, I think it starts with uh, BJ, or excuse me, with... Yeah, with I think it starts with just uh, Sefton, but he basically goes to kind of his coach like, "Hey, we should probably give that back." <laughs> I I don't know what was said, but it kind of looked like that's what happened. I can't find it here right now, but either way, what happened was is in this big moment, they give the disc back and give it to Madison on the goal line. They end up scoring up twenty four twenty two, but that was a huge moment, and it was really a team deciding, you know what, the referee was wrong. The referee didn't get that call right because he they were just not in the right place. And so I'm just going to rewind it here, and you can see Hussein's outside of three yards. Okay, he gets there, maybe stall one. Now it starts over again, right? And they call a stall, right? So it was a bad call, and the Seattle team gets together and says, you know what, what's the right thing to do here? We did not stall the guy. There was nobody guarding him right? So they, they were prudent in taking the time to say, what's, what's the true good here? What's the right thing? Despite us making a comeback and despite us wanting, having deep desire to win this game, we said, Hey, no, let's evaluate this. There's justice because it was not an actual stall, right? They didn't get stalled out. And so they gave justice because Colin Camp didn't deserve to get stalled out. So they they, they executed justice. There was fortitude. There's courage, right? It's it's the semifinals of the AUDL championship, the Pro League championship. They win this game. They're in the championship. And they said, you know what? They, took, they decided the right thing, the objective truth in the matter over their desire to win the game. And of course, that there's temperance right there. They... They, it took them two minutes, but they got to the bottom of it. They didn't freak out. They didn't bubble up. They didn't go wild. Um, but they said, you know what? We're going to do the right thing here. We're going to have integrity. We're going to show respect for the game, for the rules. And so they exhibit all those virtues and make coming to the right conclusion. So uh, the, the virtues, prudence, temperance, justice, fortitude, and courage, Take a look at those four virtues, do some research on them. But if you look at those and really apply them, of course, on the field, off the field, it's really, it's the way to, to, to righteous living, to good living. As you saw from this post with Edward Sree, 
the four virtues that every person needs to live a happy and successful life. You know, you go to these things, how would it feel if the guys won, but they knew they did it by a bad call, right? That they didn't say anything, right? Um, these are the, these allow us to flourish, right? These virtues allow us to flourish in our careers and they can have success, right? And by the way, Seattle went on to win this game. And so they did have success both on the field and in their hearts, in their minds. So they could walk away saying we did the right thing and we won. So, uh, beautiful. There's so many other examples, but, um, what I would say is I hope that understanding these virtues a little bit better will allow you to have, have a better spirit, um, how you can have great spirit really, you know, by, by learning these virtues, studying them and practicing them, right. goes back to that first definition of, uh, acquired by education, by deliberate acts and by a perseverance ever renewed and repeated efforts, right. That's how we can get better. And it's just a, I think again, understanding these virtues will allow you to be a, a much a respectable, honorable uh, player with integrity that everybody respects um, regardless of the outcome. And so I think exhibiting these at all levels, certainly of your life and an ultimate Frisbee is a way to have great spirit of the game. So uh, hope you enjoyed these. If you have any other great uh, examples of spirit of the game or how you think you can have great spirit, love to hear about them in the comments, but hope you enjoyed this. I uh, will see you guys next time. Thanks.